Let's continue our general election coverage. Now, this morning we speak to someone who has been a member of the House of Keys for little over a year. He's 53 years old, just That's right. m- m- married uh, with three children. Good, good morning, Douglas North, MHK Ralph Peak. Good morning, James. Um, May last year then, you were elected. By your own admission, you'd have to hit the ground running. No time to rest on your laurels. So, so what have you achieved? Yes, yeah, so th- this 50 months has been interesting and I've really enjoyed it, actually. And um, I felt as though been lucky enough to get into two departments, so I've learned a lot in DEFA as well as the health service. And what, what do you think you've done? What have you managed? Well, DEFA's been, been great. Um, I've really enjoyed working with Minister Roden and um, Ronan, and we um, have brought to get Tim Wald just last week, actually, successfully brought to Tim Wald a climate change strategy. So we're able now to really have an action plan for the next five years to see how we can benefit the local people of the Isle of Man. You've been rather lonely in the House of Keys and Tim Wald the last couple of months, because obviously the other MHK for the, the area... Um, hasn't been there. Were, were your Keys colleagues right to suspend, uh, and Timwell colleagues right to suspend John Horton? Well, I did put an amendment down, a remote, uh, an adjournment down, to try and get, give us time to think, really, to really look at all the aspects of it, and, and to really, I didn't really think it should have been in Timwell in the first place. I felt as though it was a, an internal matter and it should have been dealt with uh, internally. So, so were you running with the hares and the hounds to try and keep everyone happy? No, I, I just didn't think it was a Timwell court matter, that's all. I thought it was a, a personnel matter. You, you you will presumably be, if you were successful again, you'd be happy to work with Mr Horton or any of the other candidates? Absolutely happy to work with anybody. I'm a team player and I've certainly enjoyed working with, with John over the year. I've learned a lot from him. He's a very good constituent candidate. When, when you said, I think last year, that government spending had gone out of hand, now you've been in and seen a little bit close, close up. Do you still feel that? I certainly do. In what way? It's actually, we have to move away, I believe, from this budget mentality. We have to understand what cost is, formulate what costs are and deliver services around those understanding of costs. Obviously the role of an MHK, particularly in Douglas, is important to work with Douglas Corporation. You believe Douglas Corporation should be responsible for all matters. Douglas held accountable for all matters in the capital. Does that include the horse tramps? Well they do collect a lot of rates um, throughout the year so looking after the town is their responsibility. Certainly the national politicians should be looking at the national ideas. I did put uh, a meeting together off the Douglas MHKs, which, you know, was, was an interesting one, and hopefully with perhaps new MHKs coming next year, we can start that off again. And horse trams, to stay or to go? Well, horse trams, the idea is to get that promenade fixed, and that's what I really want to support, is repairing of the promenade straight away. The horse trams are going to run from Derby Castle to the War Memorial in this next two years. That's been agreed. Let's have a look at that, see what the figures are like, and then we can actually get a proper sustainable business around that, hopefully with some volunteers who really do want to run it. I know you said in your manifesto last time you'd seek to try and protect the pension supplement. That's obviously not gone to plan because that's being phased out. Well, well, it has, really. It's been protected for the next 20 years, so that, that phasing out, and when you actually look at the figures, that £170 single-tier pension is just for a minimum... Uh, anybody who's paid in SERPs obviously has that protected and that will be added on. But that pension supplement is actually on top of that 170. So I think that's a very good result to actually protect that pension supplement for the next 20 years that allows people to plan. You, you're all for protecting the vulnerable. You, you're on record as saying that. How would you try and now protect the, the over 75s from having to pay for television licences? Well, the negotiations are ongoing at the moment. Myself and Mr Henderson has been um, looking at that. He's drafting up a letter now and we're, we're putting pressure on that. But I think the big key comes in a couple of years when we can actually deal directly with the BBC. That's where we can put pressure on. That's when we can start getting what we need, what we deserve in the Isle of Man from the BBC, a service that we're paying for. So you're pushing for that. Absolutely. Where will this £700,000 worth of savings come from then if, if th- there is no charge? Well, we need to push the BBC to, to deliver on that. You expect that them savings. to fund all I, of that? I do, I do. And I, and I think we need to look at Manx Radio as well and see how we can get better benefit out of that from the BBC. Just tell me... What do you want to see at the form of Victoria Road prison site? Because obviously that's in your, as it stands, in your constituency. It is at the moment, isn't it? Yes. Well, there's a number of sites around Douglas that need to be... Um, we seem to be collecting them, don't we? we? We seem to be very good at demolishing things, but we have seem to run out of creative ideas to actually get things built. That needs to change. This next administration is all about delivery. What I'm hearing on the doorstep is we want strong leadership. We want a team. The next leader will have to get a team who will work together and face the big issues, not run away from them, not duck out of them, face them and agree on them.